Okay, welcome everybody to another Pepperstone Learn It Live webinar. Today, we're gonna to be discussing three scalping strategies for commodity traders. Commodities have been certainly very hot recently. We've had some commodities, not so good, like gold and silver, some like oil moving up and copper also moving up. So we'll be talking about how to follow trends and also how to identify the ends of trends and the starts of new ones so that we can scalp and actually take advantage of these moves. My name's Thomas Atkinson. As always, I'm joined by Tyrone Abella from FX Evolution. How are you, Ty? Good, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, welcome everyone. And yeah, tonight should be a good one. Um, it's gonna be a good way to show how technical analysis works basically in any instrument that you're trading, but we're gonna highlight yeah, some of the yeah, nuances that commodities uh, bring to us. So it's gonna be a good one. So just a quick risk warning before we get started there, Ty. The information contained in this video or webinar is going to be generic or general in nature and for educational purposes only. The information will not take into account your personal objectives, financial situation or needs, and this information is not to be construed as an offer, recommendation or solicitation to buy, sell or participate in any particular markets. So this is a quick shout out, Ty. We do have a few things that are really great resources for the community out there. Uh, the trading and investing community. We have the Pepperstone Telegram group. We're gonna put a link in the chat right now. If you're not part of that, get on it. Pepperstone do a great job being incredibly consistent at putting information out there. I follow it regularly, get information from there about the daily tips, daily things that have happened, news events that are occurring, and of course, these webinar events. So it's a good place if you're on Telegram. We also have our FX Evolution Discord and we've got FX Evolution on YouTube. So if you're interested in finding out more stuff that we do, then you can check us out in the links below. All right, well, what we're we gonna be covering today, Ty? Well, we're gonna be taking a look at three scalping strategies for trending markets. As I said, one of the things that I really wanna identify is how to look at a larger time frame end of trend and start of new trend. I'm gonna be looking at gold specifically for this and also silver so that we can talk about some of the things that we look for, Tyron and myself, before we go, okay, is gonna buy up or down. Uh, Danny, David, I think everyone does have sound. If just people could confirm that they can hear Tyron and myself in the chat, that would be good. We've got a few people saying they can't hear us. So then we'll be taking a look at live chart analysis of gold, oil, and copper. And then we'll be taking a look at key entry points on smaller timeframes and what we look for. Then there's the live Q&A with the team. So understanding seasonal trends tie within commodities, are there seasonal trends? Well, here's actually a 12, sorry, 24 year chart here. This is taken from Seasonax. And this is for gold. And you'll notice some interesting things here. And I just wanted to mention it straight away because I think one of the core understandings of trading anything is to know that there's seasonals. There's seasonals in the stock market. There's even randomly seasonals in currency trading sometimes. You might have reserve banks kind of not necessarily making decisions over certain points of the year, whereas they're more likely to make decisions at certain other points during the year. These can create reoccurring events that can help you to make slightly more improved decisions about what you're doing on the daily time frame, weekly time frame, and possibly even give you some consistency on the scalping time frame. So I noticed here a very interesting point time, that is that gold often declines through Feb into the beginning of March, and then it actually has a relatively good time in the middle of March into the April, into the May period. And this is what we saw last year as well, even during the uh, the heights of the pandemic, we actually had a decline in gold followed by some seasonal movements up. Then it hit kind of a peak and after that point sat around and did decline. Now, is this looking kind of like this year? Tyron, what are your thoughts? It, it it's kind of does, isn't it? It does, yeah, and it's, it is amazing how when you go through the history and see key dates, uh, how often it does actually play out. And a lot of that's got to do with, you know, company earnings, of course, the business cycles and the uh, economic cycles. But generally, when you take a big, broad look at it, it's amazing and uncanny how often they do actually line up. Yeah, pretty similar. And I think it's something that you really want to check, especially if you're looking at sort of medium to longer term positions, because mm -hmm. they can have a very big impact on what you're actually trying to achieve. What this is really, I know a lot of you are out there are scalpers and you're saying, Tom, Tyrone, I trade the one minute, five minute, 15 minute chart. Why do I care about your 24 year averages? It's to give you confidence and also to give you a trending 
direction. That's the key. Once you have a trending direction, then we can go from there. So which trading pairs are best to start with when it talks about commodities? Well, of course, gold. Now, it's not just gold versus US dollar. Look at gold versus Great British Pound, gold versus Australian dollar, gold versus Euro. There's unique opportunities that can occur when you start to broaden out your range there. We've also got silver, we've got copper, we've got oil, and then we have some major indices that I think are worth paying attention to, and that would be the US dollar. Now, if we have the US dollar index rising, that can put pressure downward pressure on gold versus US dollar. It can also change a lot of these pairs and the way that they sit. So US dollar index, it's important to know where it sits, especially when trading gold and silver. Times to trade for part-time traders. What are we going to be doing? Well, if we're a scalper or a day trader, we need to be way more intense into the charts. If we're a swing trader, we can probably put in maybe an hour a day or 45 minutes. This is a decision that you need to make. And I think that while a lot of people think of themselves as scalpers, they may actually only have 45 minutes to an hour a day to trade. And potentially they may wanna look at swing trading or day trading methods. A lot of the methods that we go through in today's webinar actually work throughout all of these different time sets. You're just going to up the time that you're on. So what I mean by that is you would maybe be trading the five minute, or the 15 minute as a scalper, as a day trader, you might be trading the 15 minute, the one hour, possibly even the four hour, 30 minutes, et cetera. And there's a swing trader, you're gonna be one for daily. So you just need to make the decision on what suits best for you and your psychology and what you're wanting to achieve in the markets. So time to trade for part-time scalpers and day traders. Generally, it's gonna be around 30 minutes to one hour before a market session open. And this does go also for commodities. Commodities tend to move around stock market opens and they do have some large moves. Now, commodities usually move heaviest in London session, don't they, Ty? London, New York is where commodities generally move. Sometimes gold and silver go during the Asian period but oil yeah. and those other ones, it's usually that period. What are your thoughts on London versus uh, Asia and New York? Yeah, well, I think it's got a lot to do with the um, the metals exchange open during the London uh, session. It's really, really big uh, com uh, commodities trading yeah, throughout the London and European session. So mm -hmm. it stands to reason that it's going to have a, a far bigger impact on the CFDs, even though they're a 24-7 market. They're going to be far more reactive and volatile, if you like, during that yeah, London to New York. Uh, pretty much even into early New York, they're still fairly volatile, but you're going to see the biggest movements. And if, if you blocked it out, the biggest movements are generally going to occur during the London open time. So that does incorporate a bit of um, New York open, but it's generally because of London. But yeah, you, if you don't know your times uh, of when the volatility really is there, you can find yourself stuck in uh, a trade that's not really moving and you're wondering, well, if you're only trying to achieve a very small result uh, scalping wise, you could find yourself caught for hours with uh, literally no movement at all. And of course, time in a market that um, is not moving is risk that is really unnecessary for a scalp. So if you're mm -hmm. scalping in particular, you really need to know your time frames to make sure that you're giving yourself the best possible chance of achieving what you want the market to hopefully do in a time frame that's equivalent to the trade you're trying to place. Excellent. So we always talk about the top-down approach here, Ty, and that is understanding what's happening on the weekly, the daily, into the four hour, and you must know this to get an understanding of the trend. When we know the trend, it can be our friend on the smaller time frames as well. So we wanna use lines, we wanna use bars, we wanna use candle charts and recognize patterns. So the first system that we're gonna be talking about today is how do we identify a trend, a reoccurring kind of movement, and then how are we gonna take advantage of that as a scalper? So let's get out of here, let's get into the platform and let's talk about probably we're going to talk about Brent. Let's talk about XTI and Brent. So if we are thinking about this particular chart here, and this is XTI, WTI oil, what have we seen recently? Not even arguable. If you said, if I said this to anyone, they would say, Tom, that is an uptrend, and I see that on the daily. Now, what should we be doing on a daily time frame? Well, we should be analyzing it and understanding, is the trend still up or is the trend down? Now, I always go to the weekly and the monthly first, and I usually draw up support resistance lines like this one here, and I know where I think the market is gonna have problems and where the market is going to find some form of strength. So in this case, my thought process initially 
was that when we broke through this previous high, it was most likely that we would gravitate to the next level. Let me just change that to a pink so it's easier to see. It would gravitate towards the next level, the 52. Now, if we believe that this breakout here is significant on a weekly, what are we going to be doing on the smaller timeframes? We're getting a bias towards the long side. Now, if you were constantly buying and scalping through the buys, because you're following that trend as it fills to the next area, being that $52, the previous support lows, that is the type of thing that we can take advantage of. We break it down to a daily. What's been a reoccurring thing that happens? Well, during that bullish trend to fill to the 52 level, we saw the 20 exponential moving average on the daily. And this is one that you're gonna to wanna to have. The red line, the 20 exponential moving average, get hit once, get hit twice, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that because it found support here and it found support here, every time it hits it from that point, until it closes below, it's going to be a good entry point. Now that's on the daily and you say, Tom, again, why do I care about this? It's because it gives you this significant bias to be able to trade in that direction. And therefore we're looking at buys and we're looking at these zones. Now, do I think in some ways that oil is maybe a little bit extended here? Sure, but would we be looking at still it being predominantly long? Yeah, I mean, is, is there anything here, Ty, that's telling us at this point that oil is short based on the 20 exponential moving average? No, most definitely not. And like we say, you know, throughout the course, throughout the um, the community that we talk about this every single day, while the trend is long and um, it keeps printing a series of higher highs and higher lows, there's no reason to get out of it until there is a technical reason to do so. And we're certainly not seeing a technical reason just yet. Uh, is it approaching very strong resistance? Yes. Uh, but we had very strong resistance at $60 too. So, um, yeah, realistically, this is a very interesting. I'm glad you went to this um, our weekly chart, Thomas, because this probably really highlights how important this zone is. This is a very, very strong key role reversal zone, right? There's no question about that. You've got support. You've got resistance. Look at the, uh, look at the support it had back in uh, April and June of 18. Like, you've got um, very, very strong uh, levels at this point. Has it overshot it? Absolutely, it's overshot it. Uh, but it looks like it wants to correct. Okay, now these are the telltale signs that you say to yourself, well, we know two things about this month, uh, this weekly chart. The price has extended extraordinarily high from the 20 moving average, which we know it generally will want to follow. So there is going to be yeah, a correction of sorts at some point. And what you're going to be looking for is changes of trend on a smaller time frame. But as it stands on a daily, that is just not present. Like what we need to see is a series of lower highs and lower lows. But if you want to scalp this, of course, what we're <laughs> going to go to uh, you guessed it, a four hour or a one hour chart. We're going to look for a series of lower highs and lower lows on the smaller time frame. And if we get that locked in, then we can start looking for some shorting opportunities. And as you can see there on the four hour, you can see that the um, the pullback to that key level at the 64 sort of 75 area there um, has given us the series of lower highs and lower lows that we're looking for. And we've also got uh, price under the 20 moving average. Now, when we've got such a big long trend uh, in play on the bigger time frames, what we really want to see is both of these key moving averages broken good and proper. Okay, so if we get a close below the 50 moving average on the four hour, the four hour is a significant time frame. So we're certainly going to respect it. And if indeed it tests the bottom of this role reversal zone from underneath it, uh, we would be looking to take the short opportunities. So a really good probably trading opportunity, a very, very key level. But You've got to go to the smaller time frames to identify the scalp because the big ones are not giving you the indication that it's going to be a very big, long, uh, drawn out short trend. So up until the point that it reached, recently reached, we would have been very bullish. So as Tyrone said, there was, there was strong bullish momentum. The daily 20 was being held, respected, and then it hit a target. Now we know from previous history that these targets make sense because look at the consolidation that occurs here. Look at the consolidation that occurs here. You expect weakness or neutrality at these points. Now, after it does that for some time, it can then move to potentially the next level. And we've already got that target here, which is going to be around that 75. So what a trader or a scalper wants to do is predominantly you want to take longs, but you also want to, because you know it's in an uptrend, but you also want to recognize that it's right at that point of resistance at this point. So do we want, are we super bullish here? Are we bearish? We're most likely neutral. And that's why Tyron's saying at this point, you can start to dial in on the smaller timeframes. You can look for those 
lower highs, lower peaks, those kind of things here, like these change of trends. And then you can look for short possibilities. It's really the only time we've had that ability to do so. Now, before that, it was all up into the zone. And once you know that, then you have that look for bullish hammers, look for movements like this here, wick, bullish hammer, follow through. We hadn't hit our target yet. So we're going to be looking to move up. We're going to be able to look at moving up to that 65. This is the type of thing that I look for on the one hour. Then I'll dial in on the five minute and the 15 minute. There's nothing better than having a rejection wick followed by another rejection week in the direction of your trend when it comes off previous resistances, previous supports, and then it has the follow through. Never take a bullish hammer when you see this type of thing. Don't just think that's the gospel. The idea is if it can move above and have follow through, that's good. If it's in the direction of the overlying trend, it's even better. It's starting to stack the odds in your favor. Now, if you've already had a wick rejection like this candle here, and then you've had a bullish wick rejection again, like a pin bar here, and you get the follow through, what's that saying? We've considered this level. There's been buying support twice here. The direction we believed it could hit 65 this is on a one hour chart. So you're starting to get in there on the scalping timeframes. And you can go in there and get some seriously good payoffs. And that's because you're following the trend. The 20 exponential moving average is the most important daily moving average to have on your charts. And we would definitely suggest that you consider putting it on there if you haven't already got it. So oil is a classic case of movements to the next area, movements to the next area, and trying to remain bullish through that zone. And when it hits the zone, starting to scalp within that range, possibly towards the shorts, as Byron mentioned. And I think it highlights probably one of the most important facts too, that, you know, when you, the way you trade commodities is really no different to how you trade the um, the Euro USD or, you know, ANZ Bank. Uh, your technical stand up no matter what you're doing, it's just really working out when and uh, how to trade them really in terms of the zones of what you're looking for. So I think this is a really good uh, example of, of how strong the 20 moving average is. But yeah, we can take you through 100 instruments and show you the exact same thing and you wouldn't know um, the difference between them. So I think probably one of the things you, you want to be a little bit mindful of is that you need to not probably pigeonhole yourself as just a primarily commodities trader. You, you want to be able to trade commodities, but don't pigeonhole yourself as being just a commodities trader because you're really limiting your ability to find yeah, potentially really, really good trades. So commodities are just another arm of what your trading arsenal can be. But this is really going to highlight, yeah, this webinar that we're talking about today is really going to highlight how they can be traded um, as easily as you can trade currencies. Okay, so we'll move over here to copper, another one on daily. Now, copper generally is a sign of economic recovery. You'll see how aggressive the copper trend has been through the year. As the economy recovers, it then moves up. Again, the 20 exponential is here. But one thing you'll notice is it's not always the 20. The 50 is also an interesting point. And sometimes you get multiple touches to that zone and that becomes the interesting area on the larger timeframes. When you're talking about copper, it's not as easy to trade as other things, but it does have some similarities. So say here, you might think, okay, Tom, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that there's a series of lower highs. Is there an opportunity? I think that it's harder, but it does sometimes present. And when copper breaks, it can be very aggressive. So if you want a more aggressive pair, copper is probably one that you can start to look at. Technically speaking, it moves more with the S&P 500. So you want to look at the stock market as the counterbalance to this. And if the stock market's falling, copper generally will also be falling with it. So lots of fake outs here recently because of all the shenanigans going on the stock market. Be aware that if you're going to trade copper, it has to be in unison with the stock market, especially after a crash like we saw in 2020. We'll go over the US dollar index and I want to mention this one because we're going to talk about gold and silver now and another strategy that you can employ. Now, we've got US dollar index. We know this is the strength of the US dollar. If the US dollar index is strong, what is that going to do? It could put pressure on gold versus the US dollar. If the US dollar is weak, then gold should theoretically go up against it. It's one of those things where if you can do solid TA on this and you recognize a breakout or you recognize and maybe an end of a trend and the start of a new trend based on the structure being formed and a breakout occurring, 
that's when you can start to go in and dial it into some analysis with gold. So we'll go over to gold just quickly. And I'll mention the larger time frame here, Ty, because this is a very good analysis point. And oh, we did this over the last couple of weeks where basically we had our trend line coming through, but more importantly, our horizontal support coming through this 1677 area. And when it closed below this point, we'll go over to it. When it closed below these lows here, so here's the low. Remember, this is a four hour, so not quite in your scalping zone. You know that it is highly likely that it will fill to the next support level. So we get that bias, just like we had before, we're getting a bias. This time it's towards the short side because what's been happening, a series of lower highs or lower peaks coming through here. We close below on a significant time frame, like a four hour, then we can get in on the smaller time frames. Let's get down and dirty in the five minute, the 15 minute, 30 minute time frames. Guys. <laughs> These are the zones that we wanna, we wanna really focus on. So that's what we like to do. We go from the larger time frames, then we scroll on down to the smaller ones and we get our short bias in and we start to look for opportunities. Things like shooting stars here would be good on the 15 minutes, pullbacks to certain zones. I'll just quickly pull it across. There we go. And all the way through here, you actually saw a bit of a trend line appearing, especially here, oops, where it was coming through a series of kind of like lower peaks. So these are the types of areas that we want to start targeting. And notice how on the bottom as well, it used to, it actually was moving down in very big unison. So on the higher time frames it was, and we can just short buy, scalp this down to this level. We know because of our analysis, if you're shorting down here, you're not paying attention to the large time frames, and this is what hurts you. But for all of this period here, it would be hard for us to be long. Ty, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, hundred percent. It's and it really, I mean, I think it really resonates that no matter what uh, chart time frame you decide to trade, you will find the exact same patterns that we're talking about and the, and the same trend. Because the thing, at the end of the day, a trend is a trend. Now, depending on whether it's a 15 minute trend or a four hour trend, is going to yeah give you your positive or negative results in the, in the shorter time frame or the longer time frame. But mm -hmm. yeah, identifying and knowing what the market is doing in the time frame that you're expecting um, the results is really, really important. So understanding, like Thomas said, you, know, you have to go to the bigger time frames first to see where the bias is. But yeah, in saying that, when you go to the smaller time frames, if you're trading a 15 minute chart, you know, don't be placing a trade that's looking for five or 600 points because mm. you're not likely to get it. You've got to stay within the realms of the time frame that you're looking at. That's what keeps yeah. trading consistent. And then if you do that, you can apply any of the strategies that we're talking about. Literally, they're cut and paste. They seriously are. Like we're not making it up as we go. Uh, we mm. talk about this day in, day out. Um, on every single um, in, yeah, instrument there is, and it works. But it's really, really important. It only works if you're paying attention to the timeframes that you're out on and making sure that what you're trying to achieve is um, actually able to happen in that time frame. Because if you're going for too much, for instance, and an example of that is if you're going for too much, right? So if you're looking for a really, really big move to a, um, a support level or a, a resistance level, if you're going long, and you're trying to do it on a five minute change of trend, you're mm -hmm. likely going to get stopped out several times before it actually happens. But if yep. you're doing that on a four-hour chart, um, very different story because it's got a lot more momentum and power behind it. And more importantly, uh, you know, traders bias because you've got a lot more uh, markets open in that time. Remember, only you know, six candles a, a day is a four-hour chart. So you've got you know, in six candles, you've got every market of the world open, all of the big major markets that are open. Everyone's had a say in what is happening. And look at this reoccurring thing that happens here, Ty. If we grab this and we pull it through the lows, this is a four hour again, but we grab this and pull it through the lows. When you're scalping, where's your target going to be? Around down here, you could look at the target. Now, for most scalpers, they'll be in. They'll say, Tom, I'm in, I'm out, two minutes. But imagine if you were able to take your scalping system and as Tyrone said, use it with the knowledge of the time frame that you're looking at, not being unrealistic, because you don't want to be unrealistic, but you were able to say, hey, it went down this time, it went down this time, it went down this time, maybe next time, if I'm selling here, I could target around 80% of that move. Is that making more money from your scalping? Yes, because you're recognizing higher time frames, bringing it together with your knowledge of the smaller time frames and your nuanced kind of trading, like, you know, maybe, uh, 
pin bars, rejections, shooting stars, evening stars, morning stars, those kind of things. And when you bring it all together, even moving averages being touched and finding dynamic resistance, you can then target these zones that you found the high time frames and get away with some very, very nice profitability. So this is gold from the level of just understanding, okay, bigger time frame into smaller time frame, understand the close, understand then we get a bias, move into that for trends. But what if we could take it a step further, Ty? And that step further would be to understand more than just one currency. So we've got here gold versus US dollar. Now, great thing about Pepperstone is they offer other gold pairs. We've got gold versus odd. Now you'll instantly know, yes, the trend was down, but at the same time, gold versus odd is still a very different chart than gold versus US dollar. Now you look at something like gold versus the Great British Pound. When that loads up here, it's going to be very, very different. So each one of these gives us a unique opportunity and perspective that if you're a currency trader, and let's say you're looking at you're looking at uh, odd and you believe odd is going long. So let's just say you thought this was a great chart and you were interested in buying Australian dollars. I'm not necessarily at this point, but I'm just saying that that's what you were interested in and you find a great pattern. What if you also at the same time had a bias towards gold short? So you think odd was strong, gold was short, and you could trade potentially gold versus odd to the downside. So you could say, okay, I think gold is gonna weaken. I think odd is strong and it would be like a extra powerful move. Ty, how powerful is that understanding of bringing in these extra pairs? Oh, it's uh, it's a, a massive, massive difference. I mean, it's almost as important as actually looking at the, the bigger time frames, in my opinion, on some of them, because having the um, the correlation analysis as well as the time frame analysis is really the, you know, it's, it's like the double barrel shotgun, isn't it? Like you're getting both yeah. ends of the spectrum, but also you're also making sure that you haven't, overlook something that uh, you could be that could be glaringly obvious and sometimes you do like that's that's the problem if you can get and this is what i'm saying about what i said earlier about not wanting to be too caught up in saying i'm just a commodities trader because then what you'll find is you end up only trading and looking at just commodities but in fact you can get a lot of information that will really help commodities trading from some of the uh, key indices and currency pairs and some of the cross pairs. So it's really, really important to do the uh, the cross currency uh, analysis and correlation analysis, just to give you the heads up as to which is the best trade. And yeah, make sure probably just as importantly that you're not actually missing something uh, in the bigger picture. It's not just about timeframes. Our correlations are also very, very important. So step, step one to scalping is really actually understanding in a trending market is understanding the larger markets. Then it's breaking it down using moving averages such as the 20 exponential moving average, the 50 exponential moving average and the 200 simple moving average, this green line here. All of those are great on all time frames, including the scalping markets. Now, some people will say, Tom, Tyrone, I use the five EMA because I scalp on the one and five minute charts. That's okay, but you will still get some great opportunities with the 20 and the 50 using some of the concepts. And we've done it for a long time, so we can definitely recommend these moving averages as some of the better ones out there that we've seen over the years. Now, Ty, there's a little bit of candle techniques, and I'm just gonna draw some here and just show people the examples of one of the things that I think commodities traders, Forex traders, and just in general traders don't think enough about and that is the dynamics of what candles are telling you so let's just take this example that happened recently now again bullish hammers or pin bars or whatever you want to call them they are only probably what tyrone how much percentage do you think they're good they're not good that much by themselves are they no in isolation they're not very good at all 50 in fact they give in, they give that candle a bad name actually <laughs> <laughs> they certainly do yes so when we are talking about these two candles here what you're saying is that the market has sold off it has rejected this zone and it is fined by a demand remember it's supply demand it's all about how many buyers are there where do buyers want to buy it where do they want to sell it are they get are they confident in the trade etc now, if you find this type of position and this position is at a heavy level of support on your 15 minute chart. So let's say that's a 15 minute chart and it bounces off, closes above, terrible candle, I know. And then it closes above again and you have two rejections quite like that. And then you have a movement above 
I want you to do one thing and learn this one thing out of here. If we break these percentage, these candles down to percentages and then think about the candle movement above as needing to break above by a certain percentage of this candle, let's say it's five or 10%, whatever you may be, you're getting out of the trap of just saying, okay, I want it to make one or two pips above and then get in. Will you possibly miss out on some trades? Yes. Will you possibly not get as big a rewards? It's possible. In scalping, one or two pips can make a big difference. But what you're doing is you're making sure that the market has considered this level and it is ready to slingshot to the next zone. So in this case, the scalp trade would have been, this is the one hour I understand, but it could be a 15 minute or a five minute, would be to wait for the trade to get up here. You would have to place your stop loss under here. We know that. And your take profit would be in the closure highs. So the two things are two weak rejections are great. The momentum must flow through because the idea of a scalp is you want to be in and out. So therefore wait for the momentum. Don't let the market do this again for you. Oh, it's gone. Don't let it do that. That's bad. But what we do want is this. And then we want to be realistic about our targets. And one of the ways we can be realistic about our target is rather than going for the wicks, which a greedy person would do, and I understand greed, Tyrone understands greed, we've done it before, you want to actually go to the body close zone. So the last bullish close over here would be our target. Now, did we get the perfect level? No. And you've got to work out your risk reward. And in this case, it would be a one-to-one. -one. It's quite common, isn't it, Ty, that we have to take one-to-ones in scalping. Most definitely. Uh, when, and when you are scalping, look, if you are getting better than one to one, um, sometimes quite often you're falling uh, victim of having your stop loss too close. So I think that's that's probably one of the ones. When I do my Tuesday market watch, sometimes we get one and a half, uh, sometimes two to ones. But generally speaking, you'll know, and all the people who are here who follow that know, one to one is generally what we're getting. And we're quite comfortable with that because we're allowing a stop loss um, that is big enough to actually allow the volatility to play out. Um, so that's what we find that if you're going for more than that, sometimes the stop losses are just placed a little bit incorrectly. So it's really, really important not to get too caught up in, you know, trying to fabricate more profit, uh, <laughs> except it for what it is. You know, scalping, if you're getting one to one, you certainly don't want any un anything under. But yeah, generally speaking, one to one and a half to one is probably what you're going to get. So Ty, we've got silver here. Again, silver can be offered in multiple pairs. You can do your cross correlation and then bring it in. This is a daily time frame, And I just want to bring it up because again, there could be opportunities for short scalps or whatever you want to do. You've got a trend line here to the buy side. It's clearly been broken down against and then it's reached a point of 25. Now, the one thing with silver is silver versus the US dollar tends to like 50 cent increments. It's like understanding certain stocks out there or certain currencies, they gravitate to key levels. They like to trade within it. It's like the traders of this particular pair or this commodity like those zones. So silver's one that goes with 50 cent increments, specifically every dollar is very, very key there. And if it does come back up here, what's it going to be finding? It's going to be finding that daily last level of the trend line and a 2050 exponential moving average, which will act as dynamic resistance. So there's a bit of resistance here. Now we understand that from the daily perspective, then we can break down into the 15 minute perspective and we can start to think about what Tyra mentioned again before, which was, what if we see a lightning bolt change of trend? And this brings me to the third scalping lesson today, and that is patterns, which we won't go through every pattern, we've done it before, and the idea of a change of trend on the time frame that you're looking at. So Tyra mentioned before, we've got a peak, we've got a trough, we've got a lower peak, and then we break through to the lower trough. Now, this is in our course that we teach in our technical analysis masterclass. It's pretty good stuff. I definitely think that some of the work that Tyra and I have done over the years is very, very good on this particular point. And I think it's a bit of a game changer. And that is that you are understanding that you're not going to necessarily get the greatest price ever, but you're going to get what's called the participation phase. And even the Wolf of Wall Street, I saw him interviewed some time ago, he talked about back in the day when he was doing all these shenanigans. And I'm not saying he was trading from that perspective, he was more doing a lot of other stuff. But he did talk about getting two thirds of the movement. It's okay not to get the best price, but it's better to be consistent and get the participation price. And by understanding these lightning bolt change of trend and breaking through the support, when that closure happens, 
the movement to the next support or resistance lines or zones is going to be fast, it's going to be aggressive, and it's going to be what we want as a scalper in the markets. Ty, your thoughts on the lightning bolt, you love this a lot. The lightning bolt's the most important thing in, in trading because it really demonstrates momentum, okay? You've got to look at momentum like, um, like it, like it is in real life. Now, if you if you've got a train that's just leaving the station and there's a very very big big brick wall 100 meters away from where it's leaving, there's a chance that brick wall will pull the train up. Okay, and that's what we call support or resistance. Now, if that train is actually missing that station and it's zipping through at about 150 kilometers an hour, like they do when they are actually not stopping, that wall is going to get smashed through. And that very same momentum is actually what pushes through support and resistance in the market. So by although you're not getting the um the perfect price like by waiting for the lightning bolt sometimes you're not going to get the perfect price like mm -hmm. thomas said what you are getting is confirmation that the momentum is in your favor and that is mm -hmm. the most important thing because when momentum is in your favor the trade's going to have a far better chance of actually working out and continuing on in the direction that you actually want it to go so yeah it, it's a sacrifice yes but in saying that i would rather get a, a slightly worse price and have momentum than be yeah I, I want to be on the train that's already going through that station not the one that's leaving that station uh if there's a big brick wall in front of us that's for sure yeah you want to be on the the train leaving that's for sure ty and and this is just it just comes down to again what the difference between most retail traders that don't succeed and retail traders that succeed do we all inherently don't like buying worse price i know ty <laughs> I hate it's the true. worst price. We all hate 100%. the worst price. But when it goes, when you start to understand that it's not about the worst price, it's about knowing that technically it should move to the next fill level, the next point of resistance, the next point of support. That's where, look at this, it closes above. Mm -hmm. It exactly doesn't right. come back. This is a 15 minute, it doesn't come back. It consolidated, it was boring and horrible and terrible and it has a breakout above the key point of resistance. It comes back and tests as moving average city down here, 2,250 all sitting there saying, you go up, you go up, the buyers are here and you could be buying here. I understand, that's not bad. But when it breaks through, it doesn't come back. It fills to the next zone and there's scribble all over the screen, but you, I'm getting pretty passionate about it because that's the level that you want to be at. And it's just a totally different mindset from what you find on the internet. Most people are like, I, I, I mean reversion average. I sell here and I get down to the 20 and I use the Bollinger and those types of things. They can work and they work, and you feel great because you've got the highest price, but actually being part of the participation, the two third movement is the best usual scalping method is actually better than than uh, just buying the right price so I, today today we've covered three main things but we'll go back into the slides and we'll go through some more stuff we've covered following the trends using the moving average 20 50 200 then we've covered a little bit about realistically some candle body formations and we've talked about some of the ways that we can potentially use lightning bolts to also give us advantages to the next resistance and the next support. Now, there are things like channel breakout strategies where you've got a ranging market. It's been ranging for a long time and a scalper can get in here on a commodity. It can be a currency, it can be a commodity, it can be anything. Once you get a one, a one and a two and a two, so that's two touches to both sides, you are in a channel. You can then sell the top, buy the bottom, sell the top, buy the bottom, et cetera. That's all you need to do. That's what you do. When it breaks out though, then you get into the trend and you know it should go the distance here, which is A, and I'm sure many of you are aware of what a channel is, and then that becomes the distance of B. This is a very common, very easy to see technical analysis tool. So we want to start bringing in some other rules. Maybe if we're in a channel, we want to use stochastic and MACD. We've talked about this quite a lot. This is what a channel might look like. There's the A to B. We've got double bottom patterns that you can bring in to end a trend and start a new trend. And all of these types of patterns are very, very good. Double bottoms, ascending, inverse, flag. We get all the time people talking about, you know, cup and like cup handles, those kind of things. I find, Ty, that it's the it's not about the pattern. It's about the story that the market price action is telling us and the actual psychology of that story. What's your feeling on that? 
Yeah, most definitely. Look, all the fancy names in the world don't uh, beat price action. And, you know, really, like you say, the, what, what the market is actually telling you, patterns are basically a tool of what the, they're really a consequence of what the market's actually doing and what price is actually doing. So when you understand price action, you understand patterns. It's really, it really comes down to that. Everything really uh, makes sense when you, yeah, I've seen so many patterns that don't even. I love um, the bar. Yeah, the bar, <laughs> yeah, you got the bar. But, the but bar realistically, <laughs> you know, the um, patterns are there for a, a very good reason, but all they're doing is confirming what you probably have already found out from price, and, and that is a weakness or a strength in a particular movement. Uh, and really, it really stands out from a pattern. But then you can, when you combine the, the two elements, like the bigger time frames, the chart patterns, the candle patterns, and of course the most important lightning bolts, you're going to get some very, very good effects. You know, you can see here the role reversal. Again, all a very, very big consequence of what the market's actually trying to tell you. Very, very important to to understand it. Now, I know we've had quite a few questions about, um, yeah, can we look at individual pairs? We've got a webinar that starts in oh, 20 minutes. Uh, that we identify and look for opportunities in the current markets where we apply all the things that you're actually learning tonight in them. So if you do want to join that, it's free to join. We'll pop the link in the uh, chat window there and you can just jump in and we'll look at uh, the analysis on the live pairs in that webinar in 20 minutes. Yep. So when it comes to scalping, FOMO, Ty, FOMO, FOMO, euphoria in the markets. Now, what did we just see recently? Euphoria in some stock markets. Possibly we've got euphoria in some commodities. People at a point last year when gold hit 2000, what did they say? Gold to 10,000, gold to 7,000. I saw some pretty crazy, hectic uh, people talking about these levels. That's when you know you're hitting euphoria. The main thing as a scalper or trader is that you try to really rule out all of these emotions as much as possible. You want to stay in the boring line, become a robot, and stick in between. I've used this all the way through in every every single webinar for <laughs> since the crisis last year. And that's just because I think it's so important to, to not make fun of this, but to understand that we've all been through every one of these. You ne yeah. must learn from your mistakes, though. Definitely. Uh, we have one, two, three trading style. This is something that we've covered before. Basically, this is really the end of a trend and the start of a new trend and a role reversal opportunity usually. So if you see this on a one hour, a five minute, a 15 minute chart, it's an extra bonus, the fourth system or strategy we'll talk about. And that is that we have resistance, 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 resistance. What do we think happens when it closes above? It's most likely going to pull back to the zone and then find buying pressure and make the next movement up. And if you went and checked this, I'm sure it probably did. All right, uh, well, Ty, I think this brings us to the Q&A part. But just before that, I just did want to mention that in commodities trading, it's really about understanding the instrument that you're trading and also something about the contracts. Now, I believe Pepperstone have int introduced spot crude and spot uh, so spot Brent spot crude there's some extras that are in there for you now they're constantly adding to the offering of different commodities silver gold still remain very liquid very high quality kind of opportunities copper is its own thing remember you need to look at the S&P 500 and stock markets a little bit to understand the synergies between that and try to understand the way the commodity trades through the different sessions of the day the Asian session the London session and go back through the history and put literally horizontal lines through it, Ty. Put horizontal lines through the sessions or get an indicator on MT5 that does it. You can get them. And then you can see how the market reacts to that. Once as a scalper, you maybe see big bullish or bearish pressure at a certain time consistently through the days, you can start to target that zone. Now, Ty, if anyone wants to find out more about what we do at FX Evolution, we do have a special coupon at the moment. We're celebrating 10 years. I believe it's actually this month, March, that we started 10 years ago from the education standpoint. So if you're interested, we've got a trading competition that we run in the room. It's an amazing thing. We've got, we started, we basically started about 20,000 and then people can uh, add their positions in there and, and get a bit of an idea. And if they're selected, then they go into the ability to win some of the, the profit from that month. It's about learning at your own pace. And of course, you also do get access to our private trading chat room. We'll put the link in the comment section now if you're interested in that. 
but we'll send over to Q&A. Let's have a look what people are asking. So predominantly people are asking which is the best commodity to trade. Well, really the best commodity to trade is going to be what you like the most. And yeah, I think the one that's also, setting up the best, really. <laughs> you don't yeah. want you definitely don't want to keep holding yourself here. Yeah. The one that's actually setting up, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, gold, silver, or oil, or yeah, you know, whatever it is, even orange juice, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I would say it, though that the, yeah. the soft commodities. I was just going to say with the soft commodities, so outside of oil, copper, and um, and gold and and silver, just be a little bit careful if you haven't done that for the first time. Remember, move into a thing, understand it research it and then start to trade it because soft commodities are different they have role contracts and other things and i would suggest that if you're interested in that maybe contacting your pepperstone uh, sales advisor just to discuss with them um, you know the orange juice or the or something else the wheat or the corn because those yeah. particular ones are different to maybe what you're used to yeah. on silver and gold yeah. and also and probably just as a side note even silver and gold are very very different from a, um, a standpoint of contract size you've got to be Correct. very very mindful that you don't just trade the same contract size and expect the same risk reward silver and gold are extraordinarily different and so many people have been brought undone by silver actually not realizing this so very very mm. important to um, use Use your smart tools on MT5. Uh, You'll see the smart tools app. If you haven't, you can contact your um, Pepperstone uh, consultant. They will be able to give you that because it's free for everybody who's got a live account. And mm -hmm. the trade terminal will basically take the risk out of it for you. You can say what you want to risk, what percentage, or whether it's a dollar value risk. Great and point. and then you can basically, um, it will work out the contract size for you. So you really can't screw it up, to be truthful. And um, very, very important. It might look simple, but it's amazing how many times you could potentially get caught out if you're not paying attention and you're, you're looking at a silver chart instead of a gold chart and you place 10 contracts. Like, look out. Absolutely, Ty. This is the one of the things you want to use. And silver contract is different. Gold contract, don't you just use the standard one. Uh, yeah, I should have put that in the slide. You are very, very true. Uh, we've got some other questions here. Do we send copy of this video to your emails? It's on Pepperstone's YouTube channel. It will also believe be sent out. So yes, it will. What's the best time to trade commodities in your opinion? Probably the London session, in my opinion. Tyrone, what's your thoughts? Yeah, London is definitely the go for, if you want movement and you want to scalp. So if you said to me, I really want to scalp uh, commodities and I don't want to take any any positions longer than a few hours, then you're not going to go past the London session. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. um, because you're, going to, you're just going to get the movement that you need to actually get a result, okay? Uh, yeah. Trading them... Yeah, trading them in Asia, you're going to probably find, you know, very lacklustre, um, slow sort of, you know, lethargic movement. And you're going to, yeah, sometimes they just meander down to a stop loss without even meaning anything. Like they just they just don't have any meaningful movement most of the time. So if you want to scalp, definitely uh, in the London session. But if you want to go uh, medium to, you know, intraday trading, you can definitely do it in any session because realistically your stop losses are going to be able to survive any of that lackluster movement and um, then London should kick it off for you. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody that's uh, joined us today for this webinar. We hope that you enjoyed it. We hope that you're interested in commodities and that, of course, you continue to improve in your trading. Just remember, you never stop improving and learning. Tyron and myself learn something new about the markets every day and we've been doing this for a long time. I believe, Ty, that if you stop learning, the markets are going to kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> that means you're getting a little bit arrogant, I feel. <laughs> that's true. Well, when, when someone like Warren Buffett says he's learning something new every day, I think that's probably telling you something. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody. Again, if you're interested in one of our courses, you can check that at the link that we're posting in the room right now. And uh, we look forward to seeing you either in the next webinar or in two weeks time when we'll be doing another special one. There will be a Q&A at the end of this as well. Please answer it if you want to find out or you want to do something that we haven't covered before. The questions and answers and the, the quiz at the end really helps us get an insight into what you want. And what you want is what we want to bring you. So thanks so much to Pepperstone. Thanks so very much to the community. And we'll see you very, very soon. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone.